Boy, that's the life right there. Look at that. And even all of this, it's not a bad life at all. Good afternoon, everybody. It is Saturday afternoon. And you remember how the other day I said flexibility is really something that we struggle with? But it's got to be one of the most key components to living this kind of a life. Whether you're off-grid, on-grid. Um, a life that involves animals, a life that involves building anything, a life that involves gardening. Anything having to do with the outdoors. And quite honestly, even if you work in an office... Um, or you work a labor job, or whatever you do, you work in a hospital, you're a, you're a nurse, you're a doctor, whatever you do for work, flexibility is incredibly important, and unfortunately it took me way too many years to figure that out. I'm 47, soon to be 48, and I didn't start to come into me until I hit 40 and then even at that it was a slow several year process where I had to figure out what I was okay with and what I wasn't okay with and how it had to be more about me and less about pleasing everybody else so flexibility I've never been flexible I've always been very rigid I've always been very controlled we had this discussion the other day um, the plan for today I was supposed to go down to my son's girlfriend's graduate high school graduation party. I canceled it yesterday. We have fence posts that we have to get into the ground. We're expanding our pasture area from just under two acres to a full 12 acres for the animals. We have been struggling to get this done. It needs to get done. They need the added space. Um, and we need to get it done before winter time. Joe's back to work part time. So that limits the days that we have to do it. So that was my reason for canceling going to this graduation party. All well and good. Get up this morning. He ends up having to go to work for what was supposed to be until noon. And I don't know. It's like 3 o'clock, something like that now. And he's still just now on his way home. So in the meantime, I have to figure out what I got to do. I took full advantage of him not being here and not having to work on the pasture. And I got four loads of laundry done, including bedding. That's why it was so much. Um, and I got a couple dozen eggs processed out to make some um, spicy pickled eggs to make some egg salad. I did some sweet and sour pickles. I did some dilly beans and I sat down um, a little bit ago when I was finally able to turn the generator off and just listen to the beautiful breeze that we have going on right now um, you got to be flexible in life you know and, and there was a point in time that I would have been flipping my lid because he changed the plans you know my plans got changed today I had it scheduled this is what I was gonna do that's where my mindset was you got to flex and it's, you know, it's still a process. Sometimes there's still times where I'm like, I really wanted to get this done. I really, it'll take me a few minutes to, to redirect, reroute, if you will. And, and get my brain going in a different direction where I can pick up and go, okay, well, this isn't a totally wasted day. I'm not going to be mad that I didn't get to do what I originally wanted to do that now it's something else. So, and just a couple of words of wisdom, um, work on it, you know, work on learning how to be flexible. So anyway, that's what I got done today. I'm pretty much done sitting down for now. It's been, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. So I thought I would maybe take you guys over to look at my ramshackle garden. It's actually producing really well this year. This is the first time we've had it up in this location. Uh, last year we, we tried to do some raised beds. We, we did a greenhouse that was doing great growing onions. Um, 
with raised beds till we had had a Nubian goat at that time and she decided to go and help herself to all the onion greens and pulled a bunch of them out whatever so we didn't do so hot with the uh with the gardens last year but this year it's doing pretty good so hang with me a second and i will meet you over at the garden so here we are back over at our garden i don't actually know the measurements probably 25 by 30 maybe i truly couldn't tell you as you can see it is in desperate need of being weeded but even if you don't have time to weed the desire to weed life happens and you don't get to weed that's okay your food still grows you just have to find it once in a while uh, don't give up don't get discouraged that's my one remaining little cabbage plant right there i love it it's doing so good <laughs> so we tried to do um tying tomatoes up this year didn't have well these are actually my old clothesline posts right there so we had those. Joe buried them in as much as we could up here. Um, he took some cable. I think it's cable. Yeah, it's cable. He took cable and ran that across. And it actually isn't doing awful. We just used some baler's twine. I mean, as you can see with the weight of the tomatoes, the line's sagging. But it is holding them up better than nothing, nothing at all. So that's what I have to keep reminding myself is it's better than nothing at all. Um, it's our little outhouse back there. So we have some peppers. Some of them are doing great. Some of them are not. This entire row is sweet peppers. You can see this one's not doing so good. But we do have some little guys growing here. Um, actually, these back here are just killing it. Got some real nice looking ones going. You can see the size of that. I'm so excited to have peppers for the winter. And bunch more with flowers so we should end up with a decent amount like I said we have some here that you know they're they're curled leaves we went through a dry sp spell um, I don't know if maybe they got a little bit of a blight to them yellow squash and you can tell by all of the flowers now the funny thing with this squash is I was out last night at nine o'clock and I picked squash and that little guy wasn't there so there was one about, well, even he got long. I was going to say there was one about that size. There's so many squash in there. Not actually a huge fan of yellow squash, but I'm learning, learning to eat it. I found, well, I came up with a recipe the other day for making squash. Look at all those flowers, all those blooms in there. They're gorgeous. Um, but I came up with this recipe for making yellow squash, and it was actually really good. I got super excited about it. Went and shared it with uh, some of my Amish friends, and um, they loved it just as much. So, you see my pickling cucumbers are coming out. I did a batch of cucumbers today. Um, again, we have tons of blooms. So, bear with me. You know, I'm not a cameraman. I'm learning how to do all of this stuff I really should weed but I haven't really had time nor desire to weed I picked most of these cute or pickles last night no I picked the cucumbers last night I always do that get them confused pick the cucumbers last night so there's not very many on there uh, some late planted zucchini because I realized I didn't actually plant any zucchini this year and that's what I prefer look at these nice uh, snap peas those are all doing good. I think I've harvested off of those, off of the peas, four or five times now. We have some good lettuce, nice lettuce growing back here. Uh, this is black seed lettuce, and it is so sweet and so good. And I am a sucker for just coming out to the garden and picking it and trying it, just eating it. Something else that, excuse me, I should not eat with my mouthful or talk with my mouthful. Something else that I found out this year, you can actually eat your pea leaves. Did not know that, but they go great in salads. And I think this year, I'm actually, once all of the pea pods are off, I think I'm actually going to harvest some of the smaller ones and maybe can them or freeze them. 
trying to not freeze. I don't want to be dependent on refrigeration and freezing. Um, we wanted to get a root cellar built this year. Didn't happen. Uh, right now, our neighbor is kind enough to let us have a fr deep freezer out at his property. So that's what we do um, for our meats. But trying to get more into canning so I'm less reliant on refrigeration. Got some nice little jalapenos going here, which is really funny because I forgot that I planted jalapenos. I thought those were going to be sweet bell peppers. And so, surprise, they're not. But that's good because I can always use jalapenos. I need to clean up some stuff in here, but again, you do what you can do. Um, one little tiny cabbage plant growing. Yes, we have bug damage, but you know what? It's natural and we don't have any chemicals on here. I won't go so far as to say that it's organic because, you know, there's all that nonsense that goes along with claiming something is organic when it's not been tested and certified and all this other nonsense. But, guys, look at all of these tomatoes. I have some damage there. But, my goodness, there's so many tomatoes. So many blossoms. And we have some tomatoes that got a little bit of a blight to them. That one's not going to do anything. I can actually just pull that one right out because it's just not going to do anything. When I do weed, and I don't have anything out right now to show you, but when I do weed, I literally just pull them out of the ground and lay them down in the ground. It becomes compost. It biodegrades down in. I want to show you guys this one pepper tomato. Because I got so excited last night when I was out walking. Look. Look at how pretty that one's going to be. I'm so excited. My goodness. This is just a ton of work in the making. But it's so exciting. This space is, we tilled it up because it's the first year that we've done anything with it. Um... Now, I just harvested a bunch of beans last night, but look at these. These are the blue bush beans. Very good. Love them. This whole row is doing fantastic on the beans. One little sunflower. <laughs> Planted 25 of them. We got one. Up here, there's a couple late beans that I planted. Um, up here, I planted 100 corn stock, well, corn seeds, and I got two. So... You know, it's don't get too discouraged because that's two. And out of that two, we hopefully will get four ears. And since we don't have very many, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to save them for... Oh, Joe's home. Uh, we're just going to save them for seeds. We'll dry them out and it'll be some seed. But yeah, this garden is... We did till it because it's the first time it's ever being used. Um... Did not pay to bring in compost or anything like that. Use the crappy clay soil that we have. We did have some cow manure, some goat, and some chicken. Got that all in, and that is all we have done. You saw I had some hay I got started with. Putting that down, and that's as far as it's gone. It didn't even get all of them done. This is supposed to be, the whole thing was supposed to be, potatoes. Not all of them came up, so I went back through and cabbage plants absolutely love potatoes. Potatoes love cabbage. It's a beautiful relationship. Until you have a goat, then the cabbage plants don't do so good. Um, but some of the potato plants are st still popping up, so that's cool. These are all potatoes that did do really good. They were already sprouted when I put them in. Um, the Three rows that did not grow real well were not sprouted. When I put them in, I just cut, you know, they were store-bought potatoes. And I just cut the eyes out and put them down in. Um, but they're growing. They're just growing slower. That's all. And then some late planting. I put some beets in. That's a potato plant that decided to help itself coming on up through the beets. Got another one over here. But they're coming up. 
This area desperately needs weeded. This is the back of the camper that we stayed in. We've started to tear things apart with this camper to get rid of or get ready to pull it out. But so everything's just kind of a jumble right now. But this is the fifth wheel that we stayed in for the past year and a half. That room right there was the water room and uh, there's a wood stove in there and it was all insulated and uh, hardy backer board and everything else in there. So it was nice and safe, but it kept our water from freezing. So that's it. Just, uh, you know, don't, like I said yesterday, just don't not do something because you don't have tons of money. All these seeds, all these plants, um, I can't say that not all of them. I did end up buying some tomato plants from an Amish greenhouse that's close by along with some of the pepper plants. But I did start some of the tomatoes myself. I did start some of the peppers myself. And all of the beans and what else did I do? All of the squash and the zucchini and the cucumbers and the peas. I started all of them. Sorry, wasn't paying attention. I started all of them myself inside. Um, we have a big front window a window that faces the south. I started them in April, middle of April, with dollar store seed packs. Wasn't expensive. Um, I think I got, I think I got them actually all at the Dollar Tree. They were four packs for a dollar. So, I mean, if you can buy heirloom seeds from Baker Creek or Johnny Seeds or whatever seed company that you want to, that's fantastic. If you don't have the money to spend four dollars a pack per seed or per pack of seeds, you don't have to. You can go to the dollar store. You can go to Tractor Supply and get them at the end of the season and when they're on discount. Um, dollar stores all burpee seeds. Yeah, they're all burpee. I had to think for a second after I said it. They're all burpee seeds. They're some of them are a dollar a pack. Some are a dollar twenty-five a pack. Um, the ones that I got were all four for a dollar. That's what I stocked up on. I went back later in the season and I bought extra, so I have some for next year. They're all growing, you know? It doesn't have to have tons of money to do this stuff. That's that's a cattle panel. Those are just sticks of wood cutoffs from when we did a building project and you know we had to cut boards to a certain width. That's, that's what those stakes are, so. Nothing crazy expensive. We do have the electric fence up for the goat, for the dogs. Um, I think they've all been hit with it. And that one little cabbage that's doing good, that was the cutoff of the stem from a store-bought cabbage head. Um, I cut it and, you know, how you can put carrot tops in water or you can put onions bases in water. You, you can do it with cabbage too. And it planted and it rooted and it's doing fantastic. And it looks like I have one zucchini here, growing here. But so I just thought I'd jump on, say hey, um, give you a little quick tour through my weedy garden. And even though it's got weeds, it's still producing lots of food. So I will be busy canning for probably the next month or so until this is all grown out. I do have another round of peas I was supposed to put in the other day. Didn't actually get it done. Um, I've been getting sidetracked so frequently lately it's crazy um, but you know follow along I'll continue to show you what we're doing um, hit the like button hit the subscribe hit the little bell follow me and and we'll work through all this together and we'll figure out how to do some stuff you guys have a great afternoon bye